I'm J.T. McMammon, an application engineer here at CTC, CAD Technology Center. We'll be talking about the best practices when it comes to data shortcutting pipe networks in Civil 3D. So what's the, what's the key advantage to using a data shortcut, um, data referencing in pipe networks? What, why, why would you want to do that? Why not simply XREF the pipes and the drawings that you want to. Well, one of the biggest advantages, biggest takeaways for me is pipe crossings. The ability to have your pipe crossings show up in your profile view and to automatically update if that pipe changes elevation. The crossing will be smart enough, if you bring it in as a data reference, it will be smart enough to move as long as you're synchronized with the drawing in which that pipe originally exists. So we'll kind of be talking about that. Hopefully you have an understanding of how data shortcutting and data referencing works coming into this. I won't be going over a particular amount of explanation of exactly what those are. So hopefully that's, you know, knowledge already in your knowledge base. Um, we'll pr primarily be going over the, the advantage and um, just how the, kind of the best practices of how to set it up when it comes to doing the data shortcuts with pipe network drawings. And I'll be going, going over one example here, hopefully fairly universal for all of you to apply to whatever company and whatever settings, whatever system you might have. Okay. So a couple of the key settings um, and kind of you know, ways to set things up that we're going to be going over are going to be object layers. So if you're not familiar with object layers, I'll kind of show you where that is and It'll, it'll be a key. So for those of you who do know about object layers, there's a key way to set things up when it comes to data referencing the pipe networks. It's a pretty specific um, way to set it up that we find to work really well and be kind of give you the most flexibility. Um, but then we're going to also talk about pre-naming pipe networks in your template and why you might want to do that such that when somebody opens up their sanitary or storm drawing, they would already have the pipe networks that they want to use um, built essentially in Prospector for them. So we'll be, that's another one of the key concepts here that um, we'll be talking about. Not something that's completely necessary, but it is certainly recommended and I'll explain why that is as well. Okay. So I'll get started here in Civil 3D. I have my, my old settings drawing open right now. What's the, what's the deal with the old settings that, you know, the out of the box stuff that I don't care for? So I'm gonna go into the navigation. So drawing utilities and drawing settings. However, you, your favorite way to get the, to the drawing settings, this is my preferred method. So get into your drawing settings. Oftentimes it'll come in the units and zone uh, tab and you may be used to this as far as getting your coordinate system set up for a drawing. And if that's all you're familiar with, I'm going to point out an, another important tab, especially when it comes to setting up Civil 3D. That's going to be your object layers. So if you're wondering kind of why things work by default, um, this is one of the areas where um, by default things are getting layers. So an example of that and something pertinent to what we'll be talking about today are going to be the layers that pipes and structures are dropped in on. So currently, you know, notice that this is simply pipes, and yet the layer is C storm pipe. That means that by default, a if, it, if a style doesn't override this, that my sanitary sewer or water main, whatever else it may be, is going to end up on C storm pipe. That's a problem, and a lot of folks can get away with that typically in the host drawing, but it's even more of a problem when it comes to when you want to data shortcut and rather data reference something, um, how does it bring that pipe in? So when you are bringing it in as a data reference, um, what layer is it going to bring that pipe in on ends up being an issue here. So you may even have it set up so that's on the sanitary sewer uh, layer in 
the host drawing, and then when you data reference it into a new drawing, you may have seen that it comes in on C storm pipe instead of C sanitary sewer pipe. Um, so that's if you've if you've seen that and you've struggled with that, this is likely the reason is the setting in here. Structure is just the same, C storm structure. So these end up being a problem, and I'll show you kind of you know where where this actually you know pushes to the to become an issue. So when I go into my pipe networks and if I create a network, let's, let's say I call it STRM for my storm. Let, I'll pick my storm parts for that and not really worry about the rest of this. I won't be actually doing any design. I'll close right out of that. If I look under the properties of this storm network, um, under my layout here you'll see that the pipes and structures were, are both defaulting to the sea storm pipe, just as we saw in the object layers. The issue being now, if I create another network, and now I'm going to do my sanitary in this drawing, let's say, or even if it were a different drawing, and that were my same setting, when I go under my network properties, you'll see that it's still pointing to sea storm pipe. So that's, this is the issue. So right now, if I start designing in either one of those storm or those sanitary sewer, maybe I will just draw something in briefly here to illustrate the point that I want to make. Let me just draw in a quick pipe here. It doesn't really even matter where. So that was my storm. Now let me do my sanitary. If I draw something in here, I have sea storm pipe and sea storm pipe for both of my pipes. And you know, what's the big issue here? The biggest issue being now, if I want to freeze this off, I want to freeze something, and I click on the freeze button, both my pipes, both my sanitary and my storm shut off. So that's, you know, and style-wise, they can be forced to look differently so they don't have to look just like the way that the uh, layer is calling out. But that's a functionality issue. That's, you know, to me right there, that's a problem. Um, that's not as flexible as I want it to be. And the good news is there's a better method. And that's why, you know, that's the reason for the webinar here today, right? So, so now I'm going to show you, you know, what I'm calling new settings here. So we'll go back under our drawing settings and look at our object layers one more time. And what I've done here, you'll see is I've created a layer called C dash. That's kind of a silly name for a layer. It's not actually a layer that's going to be used. If you really want to, you can delete it out with a hard delete later on. Um, otherwise, you can just leave it there. It's not harming anything. It's making your list one layer longer. But I've, I've created this layer called C dash. And why have I created this dummy layer called C dash? Well, I actually want my storm pipe to still end up on C storm pipe. I want it to continue to land on that layer. And so what I've done is I'm using the, I'm taking advantage of the wild card. So this asterisk here being a wild card. When it comes to pipes and structures, what that wild card is going to grab is it's going to grab the network name. So this again, you may start to see is why you'd want to pre-make those network names in your template so that I already have STRM, just the way it shows up in my layer, already in here. Now, if somebody were to come in and name their network STORM, they spelt out storm, that would be an issue if I didn't have a layer called C storm pipe in that drawing that's set up to display the way that I want it to look. It's going to create a layer. So if, it, if so the way this works, and the way this is going to work for me, is that because I'm going to call my storm STRM, and I can call my sanitary sewer, even more importantly, SSWR, I already have CSSWR-pipe built in my layers. So that's already part of my template. Now I'm just going to basically match my network names such that they fit in my layers. And you could redo the way that you have things called out in your layer to make this work if you need to. Um, 
but it's, it's nice to have it such that the network name is in the middle. So that's kind of the, the other tricky part about this is that instead of having C-pipe, then network name, um, I would say it's more commonly effective to be turning things off by an entire network. So I want to see all my sanitary sewer pipes and structures and whatnot, you know, plan and profile view together. I want to see my storm together in my layer list. This is, you know, allows you to keep that type of organization as far as your layers go. So a lot of explaining going on. Hopefully I'm clear. Um, certainly ask questions. That's part of the webinar here. You should have a, you know, an option to ask questions. And of course, at the end, I'll give out our contact information if you have more questions about what's going on in the webinar. Um, it's kind of a lot of fast paced, a lot of moving parts. It's, if you're finding yourself going, you know, what was it that he said or how did he have that said? Um, then that will be another way to do it. And of course, this will end up on our YouTube site at the end as well for you to watch it time and time again. Uh, and you can post questions on YouTube as well. So plenty of ways to ask questions. Hopefully I'm explaining it well here and hopefully you're kind of understanding what it is that I'm going over. So, so I have this C and then the asterisk with the pipe in here. And I'm going to do the same for my structures, you'll notice. So now it's going to be, if it's you know, C dash SSW, R dash STRC, you know, sanitary sewer structure. So R going to end up on the structure layer. Really, really going to save me some um, heartache when it comes to data shortcutting and data referencing. So let me show that further here as well. So for my networks, and you'll see here, once again, I have pre-created these networks, right? So this is the way that I would typically recommend to do it. And I mentioned earlier, you wouldn't absolutely have to pre-create these in your template. But again, the issue being, if someone were to name this incorrectly, it's not going to end up on the right layer the way that you want it to. My layers are set up right now such that I have... C dash, you know, SS, just like I'm saying, SSWR with a pipe. So if I don't call, so if I don't have this SSWR in there, that's, remember, this is the wild cards. This is picking up my network names. So that's why it's critical. This SSWR needs to match this SSWR. Those are the two pieces that are linking up um, to the object layers. So that's why I recommend it. Otherwise, if you want to implement in your company that everybody always call their sanitary sewer SSWR when they first create it, then that would be an absolutely acceptable workflow as well. Just you know, making sure that they do that and making sure they understand why it's not going to work if they miss it. Um, there's pros and cons a little bit to both approaches. This is certainly the approach I recommend though. Um, less cons, I would say. So now, if I look under this network here, you'll see that I had created this one before I had it set up initially. So still a sea storm pipe the old way. Let me delete this now. Let me recreate this network. Call it SSWR once again. My sanitary sewer in here. I don't worry about creating anything just yet. Now when I look at my network properties, you'll notice here on the layout settings, my default layer is taken what's in my object layer. So this is where the object layers are pushing. Um, and that's why, um, that's why this is showing up. I see one question has come in here. It's asking if somebody were to create a new network, what's gonna happen layer wise? Will it create a new layer? Yes, that's, like, that's exactly what it'll do. It'll create a layer, and that layer will likely be uh, white and continuous, so it's not going to have your you know, special line type. But if it's something that they want to use, maybe it's a unique situation, then they could just go in and set that layer up however they wanted that layer to show. Um, so if they had pipe and structures, for example, they could set the two of those things up in those layers and they would be organized however it was that they called out that you know, um, network name, right? So it's going to be in the layers right where that fits. Alphabetically, of course. So the big deal here is with the C-pipe, I'll show you, and the C-storm, 
I'm going to delete out as well just to get that same um, look to it. So now my sea storm is going to say just the same. So now notice that they're they're still you know they still read the same. They're still reading you know my sanitary my sewer they they look or my sanitary my storm rather they look the same under my default networks. But they look you know the difference being with this asterisk now. So what's the big deal is is when I do uh, some edits here and I draw in pipes. That's a sewer here, good. It looks like I have those layers set to be the same. But you'll notice that I have, or I have the style set wrong is what it is, but that's the important part here, you know, so if you're ignoring the, the color, is that, that this pipe is on SS sewer pipe, that this pipe being on STRM pipe, and of course the structure is just the same, STRM versus SSWR. Now when I go to freeze and I click on something on my screen, as we all know that you like to do, the pipe, my sanitary sewer pipe disappeared and that layer was frozen separate from the storm layer. So that's, this is one of the, you know, first keys of the functionality of, you know, why I'm going through the new, explaining how to set these things up the way that I want to. Right there we've already increased the functionality. We haven't even gotten into the data shortcutting just yet, but this has already increased the functionality if I were to be drawing both of them in the same um, DWG. As far as pipe style layers, so I have another question coming in. What do you set the pipe styles layers to be? You actually let those be zero. And then they, so that's, um, so the pipe style layers, you can override anything that you set for the default, that's the way the pipe style layers work. But it, you would actually, in this instance, you'd be in those pipe style layers, you'd be allowing them to be layer zero. Layer zero, if you don't know, and you can certainly read about this, is kind of a magical layer. At least it's a, it has a, a layer of unique properties at the very least. Um, and it works such that when you set something to layer zero, it, it kind of looks for a higher category or a higher calling for how to get its um, style. So if it's, you know, if in, in your style it is, you have it set to layer zero, it'll say, okay, well, I have other places in the software that I can look for a layer. You know, that's what we've been talking about so far here uh, this afternoon as we've been talking about object layers, right? We've been looking at these other defaults, these other areas. So if it's not set up in the style, it's looking in these other places. And it, these other places end up giving us a little bit more functionality than setting them up right in the style. So um, it is fairly common that we see people setting things up in style and sometimes it'll work great for you. But um, this, I think, um, again, gives you functionality, gives you a little bit more flexibility, um, which is a lot of times going to help you be more efficient uh, in how you do your design. And when it comes to efficiency and design, as long and you know, the less you think about how the software has to work all the time, the more you're able to think, how do I want to design this project? Of course, the better off you are. It's hard enough doing the design on its own, much less also having to know all, everything about the software. Of course, we all do it, but we try to minimize the knowledge on the software end of things, right? Okay, so now let me get into actual data shortcutting of this. Um, of some plants here. And I've got something preliminarily drawn up for my storm already. And I have a like a sanitary sewer design. Let me go in and actually get a little bit of design in here. Let me create that network. Sanitary sewer. Will everything be done at zero here? Um, I won't reference anything for this. And we'll just draw something in quickly. If that snapped just right, but we're not going to worry about it, not an actual design. Okay. 
So now I have my sanitary sewer structures that you can see. The style is a little bit different here. And I have my storm design. This is, this is going to be the same intersection, right? Um, and I guess I'll have this crossing coming through when I bring over my data reference. And the crossings being the big deal. So I have these, I have these broken up and I have this as an example now because we see this is pretty common. That sanitary sewer as well as water main will be in one drawing, storm sewer will be in a separate drawing. So how am I going to get those um, crossings to be in there the way that I want them? Let me data shortcut this then. I'll do a save first. And create that as a data shortcut my storm. Now you'll notice in my sanitary for my pipe networks, currently I, would, I don't have this set up like it would come in from the template. And let me just show you the, the reason that I wouldn't want to do that. So let me actually set it up rather incorrectly first. So now I have my STRM and my SS sewer both in here just like they would have come in in the template according to the new settings that I'm proposing. Now when I come into my storm and I go to bring that in, I'm going to have a bit of an issue. And that's going to be that it's going to create a new network called STRM1, and it's going to actually have to create layers then, like STRM1 pipe and structure. And so I have the style overrides because I'm using the out-of-the-box template here. So they didn't come in white, they came in blue. But you'll see that, um, that if I weren't overriding those colors there, they would have come in incorrectly. They would have come in white and they would have, certainly would have come in continuous as opposed to any other type of line type that I had. So it created new layers because it didn't actually um, find the, na the, the layer name of what I created. So why, why the STRM1? You know, this, this storm doesn't have any pipes and structures in it. Why didn't it just drop it right in there? Um, it's not going to do that. If it sees something already called out, as that name, whether or not it even has pipes or structures in it, it's going to not overwrite that. And by default, it's going to drop in that one after it. So now here's why I say that it's this is still the better option is to, to risk it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete out the reference. I'm also going to delete out my STRM. So this is my, remember again, this is my sanitary design drawing. So in the sanitary design drawing, I've come in with out of my template. I would have to remember to delete the storm before I data reference it. Now when I create my reference, it should come in and drop on the layer C storm pipe. So now it's actually finding the right layer for itself, um, the layer that I want it to drop in on. So this is this is how to get your data reference pipes to drop in on the right layer. The whole This whole thing about object layers and the way it's set up with your wild card um, is how to get them to come in on the right layer. So just the same as if, if I were to dead reference out the sanitary sewer in this drawing. I'll do that now. I'll bring that into this drawing here. Once again, I would need to make sure that I delete the sanitary sewer to avoid that mistake. Um, let me just set up a sanitary sewer. Well, yeah, we won't worry about it for the sake of time, but I'll delete all the sanitary sewer here, and I will go through and um, bring in my reference. You'll see that coming through here. Oh, I think I forgot to save this drawing before I brought it in. And I'll do a synchronize and it'll pop up like magic. It's good to save things before you try to reference them in other drawings. You see, this isn't something that you typically run into, but it didn't know that the data was there yet because it had not yet been saved in the initial drawing. Hopefully it's done synchronizing any moment now. Um, be a good time 
for any other questions. If anybody has any other questions right now, then we'll be going through and showing a crossing here in just a moment. Looks like it's still working on it. A little bit of slowness here. But the sanitary sewer will come through onto this storm drawing and you'll see that it is just the same. It's going to be on the C sanitary sewer pipe and structure layers. And that's again why we've, we have this all set up. Now the reason, you, you, if you're wondering why I recommend having the storm and the sewer already in the template, other than the fact, well really mainly the fact that if your users were to go in and they like to name the sanitary sewer sanitary, for example, but that's not the way that you have it set up in your uh, layers, that it wouldn't drop in on the right layer. Now they've done a bunch of design, well, all of their design is going to be on the wrong layer. So that's good. that would be much more of a hassle. So that's, a, that's the bigger con to me, is that now you have a lot of objects that are on the wrong layer, versus if you bring something in and you'd forgotten to delete out the pipe network, it'd be as simple as deleting out the reference, deleting out the uh, the name that's you know in there empty, and then rebringing back in your reference. That's a pretty quick process. It's going to be quite a bit quicker, I would say, most of the time than going through and finding all the structures and pipes that had been put on the wrong layer because they had the wrong network name. You couldn't simply re, um, you cannot simply rename the network and have it look at the wildcard and drop the uh, pipes and structures in on the new layer. So that's the whole uh, setting here with the pipe networks as far as uh, the network layers here. That's a one-time deal. So the asterisk in there only looks at the network name one time. It's not going to continue to look at it. It's not going to... If I were to rename the network, it's not going to continue to um, grab those. They're going to remain on, you know, SS sewers. That didn't become sanitary, you'll notice. If I can do a region, I can do whatever else I want to. That's a static connection, not a dynamic connection between those two. And just to close it out here, get towards the end of the webinar, I'm going to simply drop in a quick profile. Actually, this is a storm design. I'll do it across the storm. I will say from down here, just across for now. I'm going to drop this in. Bear with me here. And I'm going to grab this pipe that crosses, the sanitary pipe that crosses over my storm. I'm going to draw that in, a pro, in the profile view. You see initially it's coming in, coming in, crossing it rather oddly looking. I'll then go into my profile. Nope. Profile view of the pipe networks tab here. And you can click on this nice handy check mark at the bottom, only parts in the profile view. You're going to want to do a style override. So I don't want to actually change the style. Style is going to change the way the pipe looks in plan view as well as profile view but I have a style override option that will only affect the way that it looks in this particular profile view nowhere else. And I'll have a style, let me create a new one here, for my crossing. And on the display tab for the profile display, I can turn everything off with exception to, uh, let me expand this out here so you can see, the crossing pipe. So it, it's smart enough to know, kind of know how the crossings work. I'll have this override for crossings. You'll notice that pipe now is just these two ellipses inside and outside diameter of the pipe. And it's drawing right at the location where it crosses the alignment, as it were, um, of this profile. So that's the, this is kind of the payoff here is that you get these um, pipes that are going to be dynamic as long as you're doing a synchronized. And notice I don't have any grips on this pipe because it's a data reference. It's not actually, this sanitary pipe is not drawn in this drawing. You know, my, my other pipes are all going to have grips on them. 
no matter which style they are. So this is this is the path. Hopefully, this is all something that um, you'll take into account, especially if you're looking to get Civil 3D set up to be smarter and working better for you. Um, I recommend uh, data referencing your sanitary into your storm and your storm into your sanitary. Now, when it comes to anything else, you can certainly XREF your storm into your grading drawing. The only other disadvantage that I'll warn you that some people have an issue with when it comes to doing the data references is if you have rectangular catch basins that go along your curb, the catch basins will not keep their rotation if, when you do a data shortcut. So, when you have it data referenced into the new drawing, your catch basins may not be rotated the way that you want them to. So that, I would say, is probably the um, only, in my mind at least, the only significant disadvantage to the data referencing. But the, certainly things like the uh, crossing profile out of, in profile view, um, I would find to certainly trump that. Looks like we have another question here. And a question about kind of how that, how the crossings work. So the crossings, um, so the pipe crossing will show right where it crosses the alignment that's used in that profile. So if you're using your center line as your profile in your sanitary sewer, for example, so say you don't want to draw new alignments down your sanitary sewer, you're just going to use the center line alignment of your road. If the sanitary sewer, in fact, isn't right on top of that alignment, um, then the crossing isn't going to show exactly where it crosses, but essentially, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know if I can illustrate that clearly here, but indeed the, um, it's going to, the, so the pipe crossing in your profile view will show where it crosses the alignment. And it'll show its elevation where it's crossing the alignment, not, not necessarily the pipe if the, you don't have your alignment drawn right on top of your pipe. So that is an important thing to understand, especially if you do have some distance in between your pipe and the alignment that you're using in your profile. Um, it is gonna not, it's not going to be completely accurate. So if it's a tight crossing, certainly, obviously, you're going to uh, want to shore that up because that's not going to work well for you otherwise. I don't know if we have uh, any other questions. Anything else coming in right now. I do want to thank you for attending. Hopefully you've gotten something out of this, certainly. Um, go ahead and take down this information. We, this, there will be a recording of this up on our YouTube site. You can find us on Twitter if that's the way that you prefer to reach out. Uh, you can call us. We have free support. So this is our support email. If you have questions for us, I know I see some a list of names that are already familiar with a lot of this. So I think I'll wrap things up here and thank you for attending this webinar. Have a good day.